so good afternoon everyone welcome to the week 6 of live sessions on design of steel structures i am your ta danish bashir from iit madras so in last couple of the weeks we saw uh, design problems related welded connections and in the earlier weeks we saw uh, we saw uh, some joints like bar joint uh, fillet joint uh, other things and in today's class we are going to start another topic which is compression members so uh, let us start with the uh, compression members okay so how we will define a compression member we can define a compression member uh, as a structural member which is straight and subjected to uh, to equal and opposite compressive forces at its end okay actually there are <coughs> different terms used for compression members and it depends upon uh, the position in the structure okay <coughs> we can use strut also as a compression member strut is a compression member used in roof truss and uh, bracing they are small span and may be vertical or inclined okay uh, column or a post is a vertical compression member supporting floors or girders in a building okay these are compression members these compression members are subjected to very heavy loads okay this is very com- the principal uh, rafter is the top cot member in a roof truss and the boom is the principal compression member in a crane okay these are the different terms that we use for compression members like strut we use column we use rafter and we use a boom these are different terms that we uh, incorporate in our compression members so we use it for designating our compression members so Uh, so compression member is like this this is our column so if it is subjected to compressive loads it is subjected to compressive loads p like this and it is uh, restrained from moment and rotation displacement and rotation at the bottom end we call this as a compression member okay this is known as a compression member there are other definitions that i told you like strut and other things we call uh, those things as also as compression members okay then in compression member there is an important uh, uh, pa- parameter that is known as the effective length of that compression member okay uh, what is that effective length that we will be going to study okay so for example we have a column Uh, i will give you a basic uh, uh, effective length okay effective length okay <clears throat> so for example we have a column like this it is restrained in displacement rotation from both ends like this except for the call if we apply compression load p from the top we see that uh, this column is not going to bend from the points where it is being joined to the ends like it's not going to be bent like this this is not the actual uh, elastic curve of this column you know the elastic curve is the deflected curve uh, of our uh, member okay but what happens is that first at uh, like uh, at the fixed end it will restrain its rotation and at this fixed end it will restrain its rotation okay then after that it will bend so we are seeing that uh, if this was the whole length l of this column whole length l of this column uh, this compression member is not bending throughout the length of the column but there is some length l dash l dash through which it is bending okay l dash that l dash we are calling as effective length okay okay so actually um, what is uh, effective length it is actually the distance between the points uh between it distance it is the distance 
between the points in which it is getting deflected like it is getting deflected about point this and point this so this is a deflected length okay so this is the effective length so what i write it as distance between points in which it is getting deflected okay or we can say that it's the distance between the points in which the elastic curve of this column changed its curvature like from this from this point okay from this the curvature was like this then it is changing like this okay so this point is one point and here it is another point so the curvature is getting changed at these two points so this distance between these two points is known as um, effective length okay the value of this effective length uh, depends upon the end conditions of our column okay so depends on end conditions okay okay so what are the different end conditions in the columns here you can see that uh, a column may be uh, pin pin jointed from both the sides pin here and pin here from both the sides pin jointed from one side and fixed from another side okay or it can be fixed from both the side okay it can be fixed from both the sides okay it can be fixed from both the sides Mm. there can be another uh, it can be fixed from this side but uh, 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 restrained in uh, uh, rotation from another side but not in displacement so it can display but not rotate okay another it can be uh, fixed from this side and uh, same condition can be it can rotate also here okay it can have pin from this side and same condition from the above as the previous or it can be fixed from bottom side and uh, uh, free from the top side that it can have more displacement as well as, as well as rotation from the top and okay so so these are the different conditions that we have to see okay here i have shown what we mean by end conditions also so this end condition correspond to rotation fixed and translation fixed okay this end condition for correspond to rotation free and translation fixed okay that is rotation is there but not translation is fixed this correspond to rotation fixed and translation free okay uh, there is no rotation but displacement is there Uh, this is both rotation as well as translation free okay i hope you got this point okay so there are different values of the effective length like if you see that both ends are uh, uh, pinned that is it is uh, rotation free and translation free from both that is uh, it is rotation free from both the sides but translation is restrained then what we have we can see that this column is getting bended throughout its entire length okay if the column has length l so it is getting bended throughout its entire length so its effective length comes out to be 1.0 l okay 1.04 l okay when it is held in position and rotation from one side and position in one side and free in rotation from the other side that like pin from this side and fix it from another side then the effective length comes out to be 0.8 l 4.1 b okay in this b figure okay third case is but it is fixed from both the sides we get a effective length of 0.65 l 65% of the total length of the column is it is effective length okay another is effective effectively held in position and restrained against rotation and one end so that is this one and at the other end restrained against rotation so rotation is restrained here okay rotation is restrained here 
uh, again so but not held in position so it is able to displace here okay so what is the effective length there it is 1.2 l okay 120 percent of the l so it is extra as compared to earlier cases similarly in other case that is uh, case e effectively held in and position and rest and rotation along one end this side okay uh, and other end is partially restrained again rotation but not held in po position so it can rotate also partially rotate and uh, it can uh, translate also so in that case 1.5 l is the effective length okay so effectively held in position at one uh, other end but not in rotation okay rest in rotation so this is uh, this uh, pin sided end okay uh, and the other end is restrained against rotation but not held, held in position so for this case okay here rotation is restrained but not translation so in f case uh, we have 2l okay 2l is the uh, effective length of this column okay so this is the last case effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at one end so this is the fixed from one end but neither held in position nor restrained against rotation on the other end it's totally free from this side okay so it is effective length is also uh, 2l okay effective length is also 2l i hope this point is clear to you guys how we find the effective length in different cases you have to remember all these uh, effective lengths because we are going to use this in uh, numerical examples okay what is the effective length of different uh, things uh, that we are going to study okay then we have slenderness ratio what do we mean by slenderness ratio slenderness ratio is nothing but it is the ratio of uh, the effective length of the uh, uh, appropriate effective length uh, of the column to the appropriate radius of gyration that is it is given as uh, slenderness ratio lambda is equal to effective length divided by radius of gyration okay this is one so this radius of gyration is valid appropriate radius of gyration is valid only when column has equal unbraced height uh, from both the axes and the end conditions are same for the both axes so if both axes are uh, for example if this is a column sorry so it is one axis is this and another axis is this if height from both the sides from this axis and this axis is same and um, and the end conditions from this side are matching with the end conditions of this axis side then we say that it is the ratio of effective length to the radius of gyration because a radius of gyration in any case will be same along both the axes but if these conditions are not matching what we have to take we have to take minimum radius of gyration of a particular section that is the minimum radius uh, we have to take for cal calculating the effective length okay so another uh, definition is lambda is equal to effective length divided by minimum radius of gyration okay okay like we have one angle section here we have three axes here one axis two axis and three axis we will be having three uh, radius of gyration along the three axis x axis y axis and v v axis and it will be if it is unequal angle section it will be different along all the four um, all the three axes okay so in that case how we will write uh, lambda xx so in this case we will write radius of gyration along xx to be equal to 
effective length we denote effective length by small l and total length by capital length In effective length along l x axis divided by the radius of gyration along x x axis or x x and uh, you know that the formula for r x x is nothing but it is the square root of moment of inertia along that axis i x x divided by the area of the cross section okay similarly you can write lambda y y to be equal to l y y divided by r y y and similarly r y y you can write i y y by a okay this is there okay these are the different things uh, regarding the slenderness ratio so we design these columns with a limited slenderness ratio because it is very important to design it with a very limited slenderness ratio so the reason for that is the for designing it with limited slenderness ratio is that uh, the the effect of the accidental and constructional fabrication transportation and erection loads are automatically taken care the bracing members may be used as a walkway for workmen or to provide temporary support for the equipment to take care of the probability of members being subject to unexpected vibrations okay it is there and that is why we take minimum slenderness ratio so this is the maximum slenderness ratio for a uh, for our different compression members so if we see the first case a strut connected by a single rivet at each end slenderness ratio should be 180 a member carrying compression loads resulting from dead loads and imposed loads we have to take slenderness ratio 180 amber subject to the compression force resulting from wind earthquake forces provided the deformation of such members does not adversely affect the strain in any part of the structure we take 250 as slenderness ratio compression flange of a beam we take slenderness ratio 300 a member normally acting as a tie in a roof truss or a bracing system but subjected to possible The reversal of stresses resulting from the action of the wind or earthquake forces. For that, we take slenderness ratio as three fifty. Okay. So we are we have after that column design formula. Okay. so the failure of the columns excluding the possibility of a uh, torsion is due to bending okay the factors that influence the bending behavior in columns are lateral loads and eccentricity column curvature and non homogeneity of the material okay so first we are studying column design formula so column design formula so what we why we have to design the column so that we can prevent it from the failure okay so failure of column it can be due to uh due to bending failure of column can be due to bending or it can be lateral loads it can be lateral loads okay uh it can be lateral loads or it can be column uh, and eccentricity and eccentricity or it can be non homogeneity of material okay it is there okay so uh, these factors should be given consideration uh, 
other factors residual stresses variation in the inelastic stress strain character shear strain local buckling shape of cross section and end restraints are also some factors that affect the buckling resistance of the columns okay uh, so buckling resistance resistance is affected by We can write it is affected by residual stresses. Residual stresses. Another factor that affects the column buckling is variation in inelastic. Variation in in elastic in elastic stress strain characteristics. Characteristics. Another is local buckling. Then another is shape of cross section. Okay, these are the different factors. Okay, so different factors that affect the length strength of the column. Okay, so there have been a number of formulas uh, that are being suggested by the design designers. But uh, what we are concerned, we are concerned with the formula that has been given by IS 800-1984. It recommends us merchant rank kind formula. Okay. Merchant rank kind. Formula. Okay formula okay this formula is with a factor of 50 1 is to 0 0.6 okay so what is the fundamental form of this merkel rank and formula i will write here 1 by f whole power n is equal to 1 by f e to the power n i will tell you the meaning of everything plus 1 by yield strength fy to the power n from this we have to get f f will be equal to f e cross f y f e cross f y divide by f e power n plus f y power n to the whole power 1 by n okay where we have f e elastic critical stress elastic critical stress it is same as fcc okay used by as code okay F I is a failure stress, okay. Okay. So the direct stress in compression of a cross-sectional number of actually loaded compression member is limited to 0.6 FY, okay. So we write direct stresses. Direct stress allowable is 0 0.6 Fy. So our failure formula becomes F is equal to or sigma allowable compressed U becomes equal to 0 0.6 Fcc Fy 
डिवाइड बाय एफ सी सी टू द पावर एन प्लस एफ वाई टू द पावर एन ओवर होल पावर वन बाय एन ओके दिस बिकम्स आवर फॉर्मूला so what i have to write what is the for definition of the different terms i will write it here so sigma ac sigma ac that i wrote previously is permissible stress permissible stress in axial compression Actual compression and it is in mega pascal. Okay, what is F Y? F Y is yield stress. Of steel in mega pascal. Okay, F C C. Elastic critical stress in compression. that is the stress after which the buckling in the column occurs you know that it is given by buckling load is given by euler's formula so the stress will be given by pi square e by lambda square okay lambda is slenderness ratio cylinder ratio and lambda n is a factor is you to be factor is you to be 1.4 and it usually ranges between 1 to 3 okay you remember these things okay then we have types of section okay So, actually, types of section depends upon the requirement of a compression member. Uh, we know that uh, it is uh, demanding for those in tension members. For here, carrying the capacity is a function of the shape as well as area. Okay. The most important property of a section in a compression member is the radius of gyration. I already told you, radius of gyration is an important factor uh, because it is used for calculation of the slenderness ratio. Okay, and moment of inertia. and it can be increased by spreading the material out of the section from its axis the material closer to the axis contributes less to it okay and ideal section is one in which uh, which has the same moment of inertia about any axis uh, through its center of gravity okay i will write this for you I think this types of sections we will continue in next class thank you everyone for joining